talk about 4G, because 4G is 2.5 gigahertz. Do you know what else is 2.5 gigahertz? The microwave oven. The microwave oven is designated at the 2.4 gigahertz band uh, specifically for microwave ovens. Now, this is before, of course, 4G LTE came out, and that's dangerous enough. Now we're going to go into 5G, which is 2.5 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz in low band, and it goes up to something like 29 or 39 gigahertz for uh, AT&T in the United States, or something like that. Some very, very high, high radiation, which is dangerous for many reasons, and I'll cover uh, perhaps in another video. Now, people go, you know, Gary, why do you talk so much about medicine, microbiology, and things like that? You know, what gives you the um, authority to do so? For those of you who find labels and such things important, I actually have a degree in pharmacology from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Uh, pharmacology is microbiology, but also the study of the synthesis of drug systems, their side effects, and also what was ha uh, very handy included in that was biology, contact, uh, contact transmission, and epidemiology for pandemics. So it, it of course, uh, it's interesting that I would have had that training uh, it, it, to help out in a time like this, and also to take these kind of very complex things and kind of make it easier for the layperson to understand. Imagine if you took the microwave uh, door off your microwave and turned it on and left it on all day long next to a school. That's what we're talking about. So um, what are the symptoms of microwave radiation while we're on the subject? So. Uh, when your tissues are directly exposed to microwaves, the same violent de deformations occur and ca cause what's known as microwave sickness. Now, if you think that this is something that's kind of like not really a thing, I'm going to show you something from the Food and Drug Administration from the United States. But people who have been exposed to high levels of microwave radiation experience a variety of symptoms, including insomnia, night sweats, and various sleep d disturbances, plus more. So let's look at what the plus more uh, says microwave radiation, microwave oven radiation, but remember we just saw that they're both at 2.4 gigahertz. So it says microwave radiation can heat body tissue the same way it heats food. Exposure to high levels of microwaves can cause a painful burn. Two areas of the body, the eyes and the testes, are particularly vulnerable to RF heating because there is relatively little blood flow in them to carry away excess heat. And uh, so, by the way, this is from the FDA, the United States Food and Drugs Ad Ad Administration. This isn't some conspiracy website or something like that. It's literally from the governing body of the United States government. Now, it says, are you experiencing symptoms of exposure radiation? Who made this chart? Look right down here. United States Naval Medical Research. It was declassified in 1972. So up until 1972, they didn't allow, this was a secret document, uh, of what the symptoms of exposure to radiation are. Now let's look at what they are. Brain. And I'll, I'll just ask you this. With all these cell towers going up, have you experienced increasing headaches, dizziness, nausea, difficulty concentration, depression, anxiety, uh, insomnia, fatigue, Fatigue uh, is something that I'll talk about in another video on how the microwave radiation actually interrupts the uh, oxygen transport of myoglobin in your muscles, which makes, uh, if you wake up and you have very stiff muscles or muscle aches, that, that comes uh, from microwave radiation. Tremors, muscle spasms. Muscle spasms is what's talked about in Safety Code 6. It's nerve stimulation, okay? So tingling, also nerve stimulation, altered reflexes, nerve stimulation, muscle and joint pain, that's a big one. So people most often complain about uh, migraine headaches and joint aches, uh, leg and foot pain, okay, down here. So now the other ones would be digestive problems, abdominal pain, uh, dehydration, uh, dehydr no, dehydration, that's a misspelling, um, Altered sugar metabolisms. Now, this is a very interesting thing, and I want to explain that. Altered sugar metabolisms. A lot of people, when they're under a lot of microwave radiation, wind up gaining weight and getting close to type 2 diabetes. And the reason that actually happens is because microwave radiation excites a molecule called a porphyrin. A porphyrin is a very translucent molecule. It's um, a translucent meaning that it's kind of like a glow-in-the-dark stone. 
when you give it light, it'll actually absorb the light and it'll retransmit it later, but it hangs on to that energy. And the thing about porphyrins is porphyrins are very, very much the uh, electrical uh, stimulation. We are all just electricity. And so what a porphyrin does is a porphyrin will attach to an iron molecule, which becomes heme in hemoglobin, and that affects the oxygen transport through blood around the body. If you have a porphyrin molecule that's been microwaved and it's constantly buzzing, it doesn't allow the oxygen to attach to it. So what winds up happening is people have a hard time with their oxygen uh, intake. It, it, it comes across as hypoxia. It looks like elevation sickness. Uh, because they're actually breathing really hard, but they're not able <coughs> to get enough oxygen in their bodies, and that's hypoxia, and that becomes because the porphyrin molecule has been disturbed enough so that it affects the binding to iron, which then becomes heme for hemoglobin, for oxygen, uh, oxygen transport throughout the body. The way microwaves work is that it actually stimulates water molecules. You'll notice when you put a piece of paper inside a microwave and turn it on, the piece of paper won't get hot. The way that microwaves work is it stimulates and excites uh, the water molecules inside the food and it rubs them together so fast that it creates heat and it cooks the food from the inside. That's what happens in uh, cellular tower uh, exposure. So uh, the altered sugar metabolisms, I wanted to get back to that, is because porphyrin is actually attached to the last enzyme in what's called the electron transport cycle in the mitochondria and that affects the uptake of glucose into the cells. And when the glucose cannot come into the cells, then it winds up pooling in the blood. A lot of excess glucose in the blood is elevated glucose, which looks like insulin, uh, starts to pour in, which also looks like type 2 diabetes. When you have a lot of sugar uh, in the blood system, that leads to weight gains. Okay, now eyes. This is one thing I always notice when I go in a high radiation zone, pressure in or between the eyes. One of the first things that you'll notice when you go into a high radiation zone is your eyes will feel salty, gritty, and dry. Um, you'll have deterioration, deteriorating visions, and in long-term exposure, you will form cataracts. And that's because, the, like it said in the uh, previous thing, when the eyeball uh, heats up, the uh, uh, excitability of the water, because water in the eyes, in the vitreous humor of the eye, and in the testes does not flow very much, then it winds up pooling and getting cooked. So it's horrible for that. Heart, palpitations, and arrhythmia, chest pain or pleasure pressure, lower high blood pressure. Let's talk about palpitations. Because people, you know, they go, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I'm feeling like, ooh, my, my heart's r racing fast. It, it's, um, it's starting to beat really quick. That is because the heart is speeding up. We have a pacemaker, and the pacemaker is, of course, electrical, as is the signals that are coming in. Also, it stimulates the, uh, the pumping of adrenaline. So you feel, you'll probably go, my gosh, I don't know why I'm so anxious or I'm so nervous or I'm irritable, completely out of nowhere. If you journalists, you'll say, hey, nothing happened. Why am I so ticked off? Why am I so afraid of the future? Yes, of course, there's you know, the lockdowns and everything like that. But you've probably experienced them before with the increasing level of microwave radiation. This is not something from a conspiracy theory site. This is literally from U.S. Naval Medical Research, and it was declassified in 1972, which means they didn't want you to see it until 1972, but now here we have it. So if you have any of these symptoms, then you could be experiencing symptoms of microwave radiation. And interesting enough, Let's look at some of these things. Do they sound a little bit like um, uh, maybe COVID symptoms? So there might be a correlation. Some people are, uh, you know, attributing it to that. But um, it, it, these symptoms, if you present them to a physician, they will definitely test you uh, for COVID.